Here we're going to look at the derivation of the constant acceleration equations. To begin with, we'll uh, take a look at the velocity time graph for the motion of an object. So as we can see here, we've got three graphs. The first graph shows us a velocity being zero. So the object is stationary here. The second graph shows that the velocity is constant throughout. And when we have constant velocity, that means it's neither uh, increasing in speed or decreasing in speed. So therefore, we have zero acceleration. And in the third case, we have the velocity which is changing at a constant rate as indicated by the straight line. So here we have change in velocity. Therefore, we have acceleration. And this is constant acceleration because the rate of change of the velocity is constant, i.e. the uh, gradient is constant. So here then we can define what acceleration is. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So in a velocity time graph, the gradient represents the acceleration. So if the velocity time graph uh, is a straight line, then the acceleration, as we can see, is constant, as we saw in that third graph there. Now, we can then take a look at the velocity time graph and look at the area underneath the velocity time graph. So the area underneath the velocity time graph that we have here represents the distance traveled by an object. So this gives us another point to make a note of. The area between velocity time graph and the horizontal x-axis represents the distance traveled. So for a motion in a straight line with positive velocity, the area under the velocity time graph um, represents the displacement. So, so long as an object is moving in the same direction without changing its direction, the displacement and distance are the same thing. So we can say that the area represents the distance and displacement as long as it's traveling in the same direction without changing the direction. So let's go and take a look at how we may derive the constant acceleration equations that are given to us in the formula book from just these two points. The two points that we're going to use is that the gradient represents the acceleration and that the area represents the distance or displacement. So in order to introduce these or derive these equations, we need to define certain things here. So the displacement will define as uh, S. The initial velocity will denote using U and the final velocity will refer to using V. Acceleration will refer to using A and T would be the time that the object is moving for. So here in this diagram, we've got an object starting off with an initial velocity of U it accelerates to a final velocity of v. Now that can be then represented on this velocity time graph that we have here. So if we mark here, it starts off with an initial velocity of u and it gets to a final velocity there, which I'll mark using v. Now the time taken to get to that point, I'll mark using t here. So first of all, I'm going to take a look at the gradient. So focusing on the gradient, we know that the gradient represents the acceleration. So let's go and find out what this gradient is. So that's our first point that we're going to focus on. So gradient represents acceleration. So what is this gradient? Well, the gradient is the change in y over change in x. So I'm just going to draw a little triangle here. And the change in y here, as you can see here, it's v minus u. And the change in x here is t. So the gradient of this is v minus u over t. And this is equal to, as we said, the gradient represents the acceleration. It's equal to acceleration. And if we rearrange this, we can get V minus U is equal to AT. V is equal to U plus AT. This gives us our first constant acceleration equation. Now we can then go and take a look at the area. 
under the graph. And the area under the graph represents the distance or displacement in this case. So let's find out what this area is. So as we can see here, this is a trapezium. That we've got here and in order to find the area of this trapezium, we need to add the two parallel sides. So this length here, which is V plus this length here, which is U. We need to then half it and times by the distance between the two parallel sides, which we can see here is this, which is T. So the area which we said is represented by displacement. Well, let's find out what this area is. It's U plus V divided by two times by T. And that is equal to our displacement. So this then gives rise to our uh, second constant acceleration equation. Now using these two equations, we can eliminate one of these variables um, and form another equation. And we can go through this process of eliminating V and then U and so forth to find a few more equations and that will give us the complete set of constant acceleration equations. So first thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to go and eliminate V here. Okay, so let's go and eliminate V using one and two. So if we eliminate V using equations one and two, let's see what we get here. We've got S is equal to U plus, but instead of V, I'm going to go and straight away put in U plus AT from equation one. And all of that is divided by two times T. So what we have here is S is equal to 2u plus a t all over 2 times t. Tidying this up a bit, dividing by 2 and then timesing by t gets us s is equal to u t plus half a t squared. And this is our third Suvet equation that we have derived here by eliminating V. Let's go and use equation one and equation two again, but this time in instead of eliminating U, I'll eliminate V. Sorry, instead of eliminating V, I'll eliminate U. So eliminate U using one and two. So to eliminate u, I'm going to start by writing down equation two first. S is equal to, but instead of u, I'm going to write down rearranged version of equation one, which is v minus at. Then I've got my plus v all over two times t. Tidying this up, I get 2v minus at all over 2 times t. And then if we divide by 2 and times by t here, we get vt minus a half at squared. That gives us a fourth constant acceleration equation. If we then go and eliminate T here using equation one and two, we can then form a fifth one. So eliminate T using one 
and two. So if we take a look at, we'll start by writing equation two. So S is equal to U plus V over two. And instead of writing T here, I'm going to rearrange equation one so it becomes V minus U over A is equal to T. So I'm going to substitute that in. V minus U over A is equal to T, and that's what I've substituted instead of T here. If I go and tidy this up a bit, um, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2A first to get rid of my denominator on the right-hand side. So I end up with U plus V, V minus U is equal to 2AS. And if I expand and tidy this up here, I will get V squared minus U squared. And I will get plus UV minus UV, which obviously give us nothing there. So then if I tidy this up, I can get an equation here, which is V squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. And this is our fifth Suvat equation. So we first of all derived two equations from the graph by finding the gradient and finding the area. So equations one and two, which we then used and eliminated in turn, V, U, and T, using those two equations to derive three further Subat equations. Now, these formulae are given to you, but you might be required to derive them.